Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Welcome. I'm your host, Gail Nowak, and today my guest is Michelle Foss Zampino, and she is the founder of Healing Creative, a wellness collaborative offering advanced holistic therapies, classes, and nutritional products throughout Boston's North Shore and beyond. Michelle is known for helping caregivers and professionals achieve optimal health, happiness, and wholeness using a breakthrough energy clearing system called Realizing Your Sublime Energies, also known as RISE. Trained by Spa Tech Institute and RISE founder, Nancy Risley, Michelle is one of the first practitioners nationwide to teach groups and individuals RISE for self-care, and she's the only RISE practitioner on the North Shore besides Nancy who can teach practitioners how to use RISE for clients. In her spare time, Michelle is also a professional vocalist and performs with award-winning West African pop band Mamadou. Welcome, Michelle. Well, thank you. Wow, that sounded great. <laughs> you are a woman of many talents. <laughs> it's just interesting when you hear it like presented like that. You're like, oh, wow, yeah, that's me. Okay. Yeah, it is you. Very cool. It is you. So, so tell us, Michelle, about Healing Creative and how you're helping your clients these days. Um, Healing Creative was my... Um, it's my baby. Uh, I started it 15 years ago after 17 years in corporate USA, where I got completely burnt out. Um, I was in the insurance industry and I will just say after nine 11, things just got really, really, it really got real hard, challenging to do a good job. And no matter how hard you tried, you've just kept feeling like you were shoveling something against the tide. So I left that and went into holistic healing, um, not really knowing what that was other than I had seen it um, provide immense benefits for myself um, just to keep the stress at bay as much as I could. But I also saw it when my father was really sick and he got what was called an energy massage and I watched the pain just melt from him. And it wasn't just from his body, it was from the core of his being to his his soul, if you will. And so I started Healing Creative when I got out of school, basically, and I called it an oasis for your soul. And that's really what I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be a place where people could come and not have to deal with the stresses of work, kids, um, traffic, anything. They just could come and be. And it was for whatever hour, hour and a half, whatever it was, it was just about them. So whether it was a a crick in their neck or they were in the process of losing a loved one and just needed a shoulder to cry on and a gentle touch um, to help them feel better, that was what it was all about. And And that's still my premise today. It's just I've always been looking for how can I help the most people? Because as one person, you can only see one person at a time as uh, doing individual sessions. But if you can expand that and help in in group format or in other formats, um, you can help more people. And that's really what it's for me about. And that's also why... started the collaborative because for some people massage or energy work just isn't it but they love yoga or they love acupuncture or whatever it might be and having a place where they can go kind of a one-stop shop that oh I'm going to try yoga this week and oh I've never done qigong what is that I don't even know how to say it but I'm going to give that a try I've never had acupuncture. I'll try that. Oh, you do Reiki? What's Reiki? So it's that type of thing where people can be exposed to what holistic health is and how it can nurture them and support them in their day-to-day lives. Yeah, that sounds beautiful. And I I love the idea of, um, you know, making it a practice to nurture oneself. And what would you say is probably the biggest problem that 
you specialize in, in solving either with rise or just, you know, being this oasis for the soul for, for folks here on, uh, on the North shore. Um, I'm going to say it, my practice, I'll just say it addresses pain, whether it's physical pain, emotional pain, um, spiritual pain, it's what I address. And my goal is to help alleviate that. So whether it's doing a massage to help a tight muscle release so that someone has freedom of movement or doing an energy session that calms and soothes their spirit so that they can approach life in a happier, more joyful way. Um, that's basically my goal is, is to alleviate pain in whatever way that shows up. So tell, tell us about rise. What, what is that? And how does that help alleviate pain? Well, I started doing rise as part of my curriculum at spa tech where I went for massage and to learn massage. And for me, it was a self-care practice and it helped me to, um, regain my health physically, spiritually, emotionally, all of that after spending 17 years in um, corporate, after having a couple of significant losses in my life, it helped me be able to focus and be clearer. Um, at the time I was focused on doing massage and learning how to do that really well. But as I have evolved as a practitioner, what I understand is that we are a, a system of circuits and wires and those systems and, and um, wires, they create our energetic system. Um, so the wires are our nerves, the systems are our um, endocrine system, our, our organ system, our muscular system. So, and those nerves run through all of those systems and create the network that information travels on. So what I've come to understand is if there is a disconnect in that system, then people are going to experience pain. Now, whether they experience it on a physical level or they experience on a mental or um, spiritual level, they are still going to experience pain. What RISE does is it it teaches people about their energy system and how it works. It also teaches them how they can address the issue preemptively. So if you're engaging with somebody and feeling like this is just not feeling good, you can learn through doing RISE exercises why, and you can either have the choice of, yes, you continue to engage with them, but you know how to protect yourself so that you don't take on whatever it is they're trying to give you, or you can choose to not engage with that situation and walk away and do it in a healthy, positive manner. And so that's basically what RISE does, is it teaches us a deeper understanding of ourselves and how we can manage our own systems so that we stay healthier and happier on, on a day-to-day -day basis, because it's something you can do every day. I do it every day for five or 10 minutes in the morning when I get up, and it sets the stage for my day. Wow. You know, to, when you were explaining that, it sounds to me like an advanced, intelligent fight or flight response, right? I mean, we, our, our uh, prehistoric brain and our instinct um, hasn't really kind of caught up with the evolution of everything else, but it sounds like um, rise is kind of like that evolution too, but it, it's, it's just a more thoughtful, intentional way to check in with yourself and uh, and make clear decisions, like you said. Absolutely. And I think the thing that's happening today is whether it doesn't matter what your age is, is I, I, what some of my youngest clients are, they're in grade school, 
And some of my oldest clients are in their 80s. And what they're all telling me is that there's this sense of Mm -hmm. overwhelm. And whether it's coming from, you know, the exam that they're studying for or their final or they've got a, you know, a deadline for a job or they're worried about their health because they're in their 80s and their friends, you know, are getting sick and they're worried about themselves and their um, what, what's going to happen to them and worried about their kids and what legacy they're going to leave for their kids. So there's this sense of overwhelm that is prevalent in so many areas of society today. And it's not just here in the United States, it's global. And so for me to find something that could help people understand and manage those feelings and and that input so that they don't get overwhelmed, so that they can manage their lives a little bit more effectively and joyously, I said to somebody not too long ago, where do you find your joy? And she shrugged her shoulders and said, I don't know. Mm. And this person was only 20 something years old. I remember when I was 20 something, I seem to remember that I had a lot of joy, but people don't have that now. And we need to find that because that's, that is ultimately what will do us in. If we have no joy, why are we here? Mm, yeah. Yeah. So, so what is it about RISE? Why, why is this particular modality? I mean, there's so many different modalities out there. And, I, and um, you sort of alluded to it earlier about how it may or may not be the thing for you, but there's so many options out there. Why do you believe that RISE is so effective when it comes to alleviating Um, And in some cases, maybe even eliminating that overwhelm and that pain and stress. I think what I like about RISE is it addresses not just the, I'll say the metaphysical, but it also addresses the physical and it addresses the scientific. There is a science behind our energy system. Um, Just like I had said, we are a series of systems, our entire body, whether it's the nervous system, the endocrine system, all of those systems, they all work together to provide us health. Our nervous system, the nerves that run through everything in your body are the carriers of information. And if that information is blocked or can't come get can't move then we don't get the information we need rise actually gives us tools and it it, the subtitle for rise is it's tools for life it gives us tools that we can bring into our day-to-day life that is not just metaphysical but physical and intellectual so that it addresses on many levels body mind and spirit so that whether or not you're a very, you know, I, I married an engineer. He gets rise. He understands at least on a scientific or some level why it works and how, and he will go into the whole energy of why it works. It's, it addresses people. It gives the mind something to engage with so that it can understand more of who we are as physical beings and why things affect us in the manner that they do. Mm, mm, Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So what are some of the outcomes that your clients have experienced or achieved after using RISE as, as this sort of technique to get your systems back on track? Um, I have, um, it's interesting. I have a variety of different clients and I've had a client that is a writer um, and a sculptor and an attorney. And he has been doing his, his, what made him his living was being an attorney, but at his heart, he was an artist, a sculptor and a writer. And he's been getting, you know, he's older, he's 70 something now. And for the last four or five years, 
he's been saying, I really would like to get my work out there. I have all of these sculptures in the basement. I have these reams and reams of notebooks of poetry and stories that I've written. I'd really like to get out there. And he would say, but I just, I, I can't seem to get out of my own way. And it's not anything that's going to make me any money anyway. So I just need to keep doing what I'm doing. Well, he started doing Rise with me three years ago. Since he's done Rise, he's won numerous awards for his sculptures because they're not sitting in the basement anymore. He's actually putting them in art shows and getting awards. He's um, got one of his books that is just about ready to go to a publisher. He's actually manifesting. So whatever was holding him back, whatever was getting in his way of manifesting his full potential has been alleviated and he has a clarity and a focus and a path to follow to get his work out there and fulfill a dream that he's had since he was 20 something years old. That to me is amazing. Um, I have another client who has had chronic, chronic shoulder pain. She has been a massage client for almost 15 years and she did one rise session with me and that shoulder pain is gone and it has not come back. So whatever the core issue that was creating that problem was removed and it hasn't come back. So those are the things that I find are amazing. Um, I have a client who is new to me and had gone through a series of I'll just say challenging emotional situations and hadn't eaten for two weeks Mm. when he came in to see me and he left my office and called his sister and said, Hey, where are we going for lunch? (laughs) That was with one session. So whatever it was that was blocking him and keeping him in this really dark place where he didn't want to eat and Like I said to him, I said, you know, that's not going to turn out well. He says, yeah, I know, but I really don't care right now. And switching that in an hour session to him wanting to not only go out to eat, but go out and have it be a social situation with someone. So it was amazing. Yeah. So powerful too. I mean, I, I, what's, so intriguing and fascinating to me is the the speed at which people are are seeing that kind of result and thinking about you know there's a, there's certainly a place for traditional medicine oh absolutely uh, psychology counseling and everything but it seems like those things sometimes can take years it can and sometimes th- those things are you know rise can work in conjunction with all of those things. It just helps bring another level of clarity. It helps people process through some really challenging things quicker. Mm -hmm. Now, it, you know, I, I would not say do this instead of that. I would say always do this in addition to that because we are still evolving and we're still learning what works for our bodies and what doesn't. And I think that RISE can bring us a level of clarity as to what does and doesn't work. So I'm not going to tell somebody who's got some serious emotional issues to not continue to see their psychologist or their therapist. Absolutely. But it might bring them another level of clarity that they can process through whatever it is they're working on quicker and more effectively so that they can get to that joyous place and and live their life with joy and vitality. That's that's the goal is to embrace your life force and live your life with joy and vitality. Yeah, yeah. So why why wouldn't anybody want to do this? You know, I, I what are some of the the myths um, that you come up against? I know that you you're working on um, offering this to corporations and businesses, as well as, you know, making it available to, to people who come to your studios. Um, so I know corporate can kind of be a tough nut to crack. So 
what are some of the myths or, or fears that hold people back from introducing this into the workplace, for example? It's showing them the tangible results. And that's the challenge because it is a relatively new modality. Um, Nancy created it about 30 years ago. And so the results are happening just like for me happening in my studio with one-on-one clients or in my groups and bringing that and having the language to communicate the tangible results that happen. Um, And I just had a conversation with someone yesterday. I was at a networking event and she was asking me if energy work or rise could help someone that she cared very much about who was having some cognitive issues. And I said, I believe it can. And she said, how? And by explaining, just as I had done before, that there is a science behind what RISE does. It's not just woo-woo. It's not just, you know, I'm going to wave a crystal and I'm going to, you know, do a chant over you. And I'm not saying that those modalities don't work because I've seen amazing results from them. But what I am saying with RISE is that there is a science behind it that can engage the logical intellectual mind that it can find a path to understand that. But the challenge is communicating that in a language that doesn't sound mythical, doesn't sound magical, doesn't, because they don't want magic and myth. They want results. And right, and performance. The results need to... The results need to be a positive impact on performance, which is a positive impact on bottom line. So that's the corporate mentality. And, you know, I can't say that that's a wrong mentality to have because if the corporates corporations are not making money, they don't exist. But what I'm inviting is that maybe they could spend a little of their resources to create an environment that is healthier and more supportive for their employees and for their workers, that then their performance is increased. So then their bottom line is increased because, you know, it's like happy wife, happy life. Well, if you have a happy, healthy environment to work in, you're going to have happy, healthy employees that are going to want to show up. They're going to want to do a good job. It's not going to be something that they're being forced to do. They're going to want to do it. And that just in and of itself will increase their bottom line. Yeah. So what, what's the most important thing that executives um, should consider when it comes to kind of creating that environment where they're, they're either as an organization helping their employees and team with overall, overall well-being, or even if you're, you know, an individual professional, um, what's kind of the most important thing to consider for your own well-being? Um, I'm going to use the term mindfulness. It is being mindful of how our behaviors and how we interact with each other is very, very powerful. And it can be with words, it can be with emotion, it can be, you know, if you come in and you've had a bad morning and had a fight with your spouse and you go into a meeting and approach your team, your manners and your speech is going to be um, coming from a very different place than if you've had a really nice morning and you've gone for a nice run and you've had a great cup of coffee and you didn't hit any traffic on the way in and you get to the meeting 10 minutes early so you have five minutes to breathe and then you step into that place of engaging with your staff. You're going to approach it from a different place. If you are a RISE, a person who practices RISE, you can engage and have a challenging situation. When you get to the office in 
30 seconds, you can go through, check your system, get yourself into that good place so that you can engage in a healthy, positive manner with your team or your coworkers. So you're not, excuse the, the, the language, but regurgitating your bad morning on all of them. Mm. So that then now all of them are in that yucky, yucky place. And so they go through work, feel the, the work day feeling, feeling miserable. And then they go home and they're ticked off at everybody that gets in their way on the way home. And they walk in the door and the spouse is engaging and the kids are trying to engage. And all they want to do is tell them to all go fly a kite because they're done. Again, if they have a challenging situation, 30 seconds, clear your system, get your plate, get rid of what's not serving you, engage and bring that all in so that when you do engage with other people, you're doing so in a healthy manner. The thing that most people deal with is that they're not only processing and dealing with their own emotions and their own, I'll say, stuff, they're also engaging and taking on other people's stuff. And when we start to do that, it really gets murky into what is working and what's not working, what's theirs, what's not theirs. And it just creates this environment of mess and murk that they're trying to work in. And I don't know about you, but I like to work in a, in a healthier environment where it's light and bright and I can think clearly and I can come up with creative solutions to issues and, and in, enjoy my work and enjoy the environment that I'm working in. And I think that what RISE can do is it helps them to create that environment. If everyone is practicing RISE, they don't bring that negative stuff to the table. Right. And I would imagine that, it, you know, even if, I mean, let's face it, life happens. And so oh, sometimes, yeah. you, sometimes you have a bad day, but if everybody in the office is practicing RISE and one person is having a bad day, I would imagine it, it doesn't have the same kind of impact as it would it otherwise. Doesn't. Correct. It doesn't have the same impact. And a lot of times what winds up happening is you've got everybody in, is, is doing their rise exercises and staying in there, holding their container and keeping themselves in a good place. That one person that might be having a bad day oftentimes will entrain to that lighter, brighter energy and go, oh, wait a minute. Did I? Oh, no. Let's clear this clutter so that I can have a better day moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, life happened. Yeah, maybe they got in an accident on the way to work and they're not in the best place, but they can clear the clutter of what that emotion brought up, what it triggered in them and bring them into a better place so that they can then engage with the rest of their day in a positive manner. Yeah. Wow. Imagine a world like that. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice? It would be. It would be wonderful. It would be so nice. Yeah. So I know that um, you offer rise in a few different ways. So can you just kind of talk about how you how you deliver it to your clients? Um, the first way that I will deliver it, and this is something that came after you know a few trials and error. But people don't know what RISE is. So what I have been doing for the last three or four years, ever since I became a RISE practitioner, is uh, about once a month, um, I do something called Experience RISE. So what that looks like is it's a, a series of four meditations um, that they come in on a weekly basis. And for them, it looks like a meditation. And I do the rise work. So I do the rise exercise and the rise work on them while they're listening to singing bowls and listening to um, uh, someone talking them through a meditation. I'm doing rise clearing on them. So they experience what it feels like to have a squeaky clean energy system. Um, and most people go, oh my God, I've never felt this amazing. Usually after the first one, they're like, I feel lighter and brighter than I've ever felt before. So I take them through and doing experience rise so that they understand how it feels in their own body, because that oftentimes 
is the catalyst for them to say, how do I learn to do this on myself? And the next thing that I would do with them is I would teach them something called Rise for You. So I take them through in, it's a 16 hour class, teaching them how to perceive how things affect their energy system, what those things are, and how they clear them. And the exercises that they can do on a daily basis that literally can take seconds to keep themselves in that good place. And then as of January, I was certified as a RISE teacher. So if there is someone out there, whether it be a doctor, a nurse, another holistic practitioner, um, someone in the corporate world, I have the tools that I can teach them to do this and teach others. So they become a RISE practitioner. So for example, if you have somebody in human resources that said, you know, this is great, but I've got new people coming in all the time and I want to be able to teach them. I can't bring you in all the time. Can you teach me how to be a RISE practitioner so that then I can do the RISE for you classes for the new employees coming in? Absolutely. I can teach them how to be RISE practitioners so that they can do that in their own environment. Wow. That's awesome. What positive shifts have you experienced either just in your, in your own little pocket of the universe or even the world at large as a result of this work? For me personally, I have an increased level of awareness, um, of intuition. I trust myself and my intuition, and my creativity more. Um, I find I have more energy and can accomplish more, um, oftentimes in a shorter span of time, um, so that then I have more time to engage in other things that I enjoy, like hanging out with my husband and doing my music and other th- and traveling. And I th- have witnessed that in a lot of my clients as well. Um, I have someone who has yet to take my rise for you class because she likes to come in, um, about every other month and say, and, and she actually will say she's a nurse has been a nurse for 30 years. She said, I need my chakras aligned. And I laugh because I said, you know, if you'd ever learn to come in and, and do that yourself, you could do that on a regular basis. She said, I just love it when you do it because I don't have to think about it or engage. And if people want to do that, that's fine. But I invite that they take the next level and do it themselves because it is cumulative and they see the results faster if they're doing it on a regular basis. Mm, Yeah. And and you know what? I'm glad that you um, brought up your client who's a nurse because there's a lot of people out there who are doing healing work and, and our caregivers and what happens, Michelle, (laughs) what happens to these? What's the, what are the big mistakes that these healing practitioners and caregivers make? We try to heal people by giving away our energy. We can't heal anyone if we're giving everything away. Mm. And I will use the oxygen mask analogy. If we, if there is an issue on a plane and the oxygen mask drops, you put it on yourself first so that you have the strength and the capacity to help others. But what most, and I will say this as most, healers do, and whether they're holistic healers, whether they're doctors or nurses, whether they're caregivers that are caring for an an elderly parent or a, a child, if they're teachers, these are all, and I'll use the term in a very general sense, they are healers. They are engaging with people and there is an exchange of energy. But if we continually give our energy away, there's nothing left. And what it winds up doing is leaving us resentful and angry. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is what I'm seeing 
a lot in society right now is there's a lot of resentment and anger because we're drained. We're completely drained. And that's the mistake that I think a lot of us do. We think we can help by, well, here, take, here, take, here, take. But then all of a sudden you look and you're like, okay, I'm out. And you look to see who can refill you. And there isn't anyone around. And that's when you get angry and resentful. And then you're not in a good place to do anything, including your job. And if it happens to be healing someone, it's not going to work really well. Or you're going to keep giving and to the point that you're completely fried and can't even do your job anymore. Mm. And that's sad because let's face it, no matter how much rise we do, the planet needs healing. People need to have that human engagement and it needs to come from a really happy and positive place, not a place of resentment and anger. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So rise is one way to avoid that. Um, what else? Is there anything else that people should know that, that we haven't yet covered? You know, rise is an amazing practice, but I will just invite that for people, if they can just start by taking, maybe it's 30 seconds a day, maybe it's 10 seconds a day, to just close their eyes and take a nice deep breath and feel what that feels like in your body. And that can be an amazing place to start because it gives you that moment of peace, of silence, that all you have to do is breathe. And people forget that. <laughs> so I will invite that a great place to start is there. Just breathe. Yeah, this sounds so simple and obvious, and yet we don't do it, do we? <laughs> we're, so, no. we're just so frenetic, I think, as a <laughs> as a society, right? Like, I, there's all kinds of great advances and everything, but in on the flip side of that, um, we've sort of forgotten how to how to connect with our with our own bodies and our own spirit and our own mind. And geez, w what a simple thing just to take thirty seconds take a breath, check in, see how it feels. That's a great piece of advice. It is. And I have a very good friend of mine who reminds us or reminds me frequently, you cannot give what you don't have. Mm. If you don't have peace in your heart, you can't give peace in your heart. If you don't have hope in your life, you can't give hope. And if you don't have love for yourself, you can't give love. So a good place to start, again, is to just breathe and recognize those things in yourself because then you can share them with others. Yeah, yeah. So how can someone find out more about you, Michelle, and Rise and Healing Creative? Um, they can always find me through my website, um, which is healingcreative.com. Um, it is an it is in the moment being evolved into um, addressing more of what I'm talking about today, but they can always reach me through there. Um, my email is michelle at healingcreative.com and they can find me on Facebook and um, a lot of what we're doing and going on and events and things that are happening, especially around RISE, are there. Until next time, remember, be your best story and share your positive news now. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.